All right, uh, so this is going to be a video of SLT 1 to 3, uh, the first week of class for Honors Algebra 2. Um, I'll put this packet on the Canvas or the uh, MyMCPS platform, and you can do with that with that what you want. You could download it and print it out and write on it, or... Uh, you can also use the Cami extension, this Cami extension software, load it into that, and then um, you can annotate things on that with your keyboard or with your mouse. It's difficult to write with the mouse, but uh, if you have some kind of uh, tablet or writing device, a stylus, then you could write on the document that way with Cami. Anyway, uh, or you could just uh, take uh, some notebook paper and write down some notes, you know, label the date and uh, what page number we're on. So this is page one of the packet here. Let's go ahead and get started. I'll read the directions here. And if you're watching this on a video, you can stop and start it as you like to uh, try to figure out the answer yourself and then go back to the video and look at the answer. So suppose you're given the following directions, <coughs> excuse me, to get to Edwin's house. From home, go north on Route 23 for five miles. Turn east, which is right, onto Orchard Street. Go to the third traffic light and turn north or left onto Avon Drive. And then Edwin's house is the fifth house on the right. So if you were to start from Edwin's house, write down the directions to get home. And how do you determine the directions to get home from Edwin's house? So one thing I would do here is draw a picture of what's going on, and that might help you uh, determine the reverse direction. So uh, let's draw a little picture of a house here. So I'll draw a little picture of a house. And then uh, I go north on Route 23 for five miles and then turn right onto Orchard Street and then go to the third traffic light. So we'll just make a couple lights here. One, two, three, and then turn, uh, North or left onto Avon, and then Edwin's house is the fifth one up on the right. So, let me draw. Let me make it this higher here. So, one, two, three, four, five. Here's Edwin's house. All right, and then this is Route 23. This is Orchard. And this is Avon. All right, so if you start at Edward House, you're going to uh, go south on Avon.
and then at the traffic light Uh, turn right. or west on orchard and i guess an assumption could be there's a traffic light here at route 30 uh, 23 but uh i'm not going to assume that i'm just going to say when you get to route 23 you're going to go uh, south. And if there were a traffic light, that would mean you'd turn left on Route 23, but uh, if this was a major highway, then could be an on-ramp where most on-ramps are you exit on the right. So I'm just going to say go south on 23 uh, for five miles. Uh, to arrive back home. Well, how did we determine that? We just uh, followed the directions in reverse. And we also drew a map. To help visualize what was going on. All right, so this, now we're jumping from directions to a math problem and how to do the inverse or reverse the order of operation here. So it says, suppose you're given an, the following algorithm starting with a number. Add five to that number, divide the result by three, subtract four from that quantity, double your result. Write a function or that given an original number n We'll model the algorithm above. So R is you got the number and you're adding five to it. And then you divide that result by three and subtract four from the number and then double your result. So if you knew <coughs> Excuse me, the final resulting number is 10. What's the original? So it's actually this is the number 10. So if we were to solve the equation once we had 10 right here on the left, then we would do inverse operation. So the well, first thing we do is take 10 divided by 2 is 5. All right, so we're just doing this. Uh, order of operation in reverse fashion. So, so if we double the result, so we just uh, divide by five and then subtract four. So that would mean we'd add four would be the inverse. And you get nine. And then we divided the, 
So uh, working backwards or doing the inverse, divide the result by 3, we would multiply 9 by 3. And I get 27. And then uh, if I added 5, then I would subtract 5. So 27 uh, minus 5 is 22. So this, if I knew the final answer is what was the original, is this 22. So if I were to write a function, and this is actually... So function B is going to be the inverse of the original. So that gives the final result F. Given the final result F, that will determine the original number. So, so we're, we're starting with F. And then we want to do uh, two times that. So let me think here. So, I mean, we want to do the inverse. So F divided by 2 uh, minus, uh, so subtract 4. We're going to add 4. So we're doing these operations here. So this is F divided by 2. Then we added 4. Uh, then we multiply that all by 3. So we need parentheses for that. And then we finally, we subtracted 5. So just to check our work here, we have 22 divided by 2. Twenty-two divided by two is eleven. I mean, ten divided by two is five. Plus four is nine. Nine times three is twenty-seven. Minus five is twenty-two. So if we put a a ten in here, we do get twenty-two out. All right. And one way to uh, check a function and its inverse is to input uh, some number here, get the result, and then plug it in here and see uh, if uh, you get the original input. So... So in other words, if we put 22 in here, 22 plus 5 is 27. Divide by 3 is 9. Minus 4 is 5. Times 2 is 10. And then if we put 10 in here, 10 divided by 2 is 5. Plus 4 is 9. Times 3 is 27. Minus 5 is 22. So if we input 22 here originally, we get a 10 out. And then with what's 10 in here, we get a 22 out, which is the original input of here. If it was 22, then we take the output here and put it in there, and we end up with the original input again. You'll see that in uh, on the next page when we uh, look at functions that are inverse of each other. So this is what I'm talking about here. So in the table below, choose any number n. Place in the first column, evaluate the function. Evaluate function 1 at n, and then place the result in the h of n column right here. And then you're going to input that into this function and get the result. And so uh, these functions just happen to be inverse of each other. You'll see that if I input something here, we get an output, put the output in here as an input, and the result is going to be the same as what I started with. 
<coughs> so let me suggest some numbers to input here. So uh, let me think here. So if I put a five in here, yeah, that wouldn't work. So let's go ahead and put a five here. The next one, uh, let's put a seven in there. And this one, let's put a two in there. Let's put a four in this one. And then for uh, this H of N function, let's put a multiple of two. So let's put a six in. And here, let's try to get a perfect square. So let's put a six in there also. And then here, uh, let's put a two in there. So if you're watching this as a video, you can stop the video right here and go ahead and input these in, get an output, take the output here and put it here and get the result. So let me do the first one for you and see what I, I mean, uh, how to do this. So, uh, so uh, two times five is 10 minus five is five. And then I put a five in here. Five plus five is 10 divided by two is five. Probably not the best number to put in there because I got five everywhere. But <coughs> so just to do the second one with you again, and then you can see what's going on. So seven plus five is 12 divided by two is six. And then six times two is 12 minus five is seven. All right. So if you're watching some video, stop it here and then do the rest on your own. But continuing on, 2 cubed is 8 plus 2 is 10. And then 10 minus 2 is 8, and the cube root of that is 2. And then here, 2 times 4 is 8, and the cube root of that is 2. And then 2 cubed is 8 divided by 2 is 4. And then uh, negative 7 halves times 6 would be negative 21 minus 3 is negative 24 and then uh, you have negative 48 uh, plus 6 negative 48 plus 6 is negative 42 divided by 7 is uh, negative 6 and then the opposite of negative 6 is positive 6 and here, 2 times 6 is 12, minus 3 is 9, square root is 3. And then 3 squared is 9, plus 3 is 12, divided by 2 is 6. And then 2 squared is 4 plus 1 is 5. 5 minus 1, 4, square root of that is 2. And so what do I notice here that this input of function one is same as the output as function two. So when that's true, when you input something into function one, get an output, take that output, put in a function two, and the results matches the uh, original input. That's one way to show that functions are inverse of each other. But if you look at this first function, say, what did we do? We took a number divided or multiplied by two. 
and then subtracted five from it. So in order to do the inverse, we take the number and the last thing we did was subtract five. So the first thing we're gonna do is add five to that number. And then uh, by order of operation, uh, this came second here, you multiply by two, but the inverse of that is divide by two. So the well, function inverse is just doing undoing the original operations in uh, the reverse order, like we sol solve an equation. So it's doing the order of operation in reverse. So here, the first thing you do is multiply by two. So over here, the number is the first thing um, or the last, the last thing we did was add, uh, subtracted five. So the first thing was add five. And then um, by order of operation, we did multiplication first. So we do that last. We divide by two, last. Mm -hmm. All right, and this is... These are the homework problems here. So you would try these on your own, but then um, you go ahead and try them and then you can check this video to see if you have the right answer. So N is a certain amount of money in the bank. Account on Friday morning during the day, she writes a check for $24.50. Makes an ATM withdrawal of Haiti, deposit check for 235. At the end of the day, she sees her balance was 451. How much money did she have in the bank at the beginning of the day? So here's what happened. She had some money. Uh, she writes a check for 2450. And then uh, she made a withdrawal of 80 so that would subtract 80 off of her account and then she would deposit a check for a 235 and so her balance is 451.25 so uh in order to find uh how much she had at the beginning of the day Well, the last thing you did was uh, you added 235, so you had subtract 235. Uh, you got five, two, six, one, and Four minus two is two. So then you would add that, add 80 because you subtracted. So six, uh, nine. 296, and then uh, you subtract the 2450, so you want to add that. So... Whoops. 296.25 plus 24.50. So 5, 7, 10, carry 1, 12. So three twenty seventy five. 
So you could do this. You could make this an equation that like V, your final balance is equal to this. Or so if you plug 425 or 451.25 into here, then you would do all these inverse operations on the final balance to get uh, what the beginning balance was. So this is your beginning balance and All right, so number two says, suppose you're starting with a number, add four to that, multiply the result by two, subtract five from the quantity, and then write a function f that given the original number is x, and models the algorithm. So you have a number x, you add four to that, and then multiply the result by two. So you have to put that in parentheses and then subtract five. If you knew that the final number is nine was the original. So you have nine. And um, the last thing you did was subtract five. So you want to add five to that. 14 and then uh, you multiply by 2 here so the, the inverse would be divide by 2 14 divided by 2 is 7 and then finally uh, since I added 4 here I would subtract 4 so we get 3 so write a function g that given the final result, H will determine the original. So you have H, and then we added 5 to that. And then we uh, multiply, uh, multiply by 2. So the inverse was divide by 2. So we're just doing this. Take, this is H plus 5 divided by 2, and then uh, subtract 3. Or subtract four, sorry. So we, we want to subtract four now since we added four originally. All right, and there's your G function. All right, next one says house and school day starts at 8.30, but today she wants to arrive 10 minutes early to discuss the sign with her English teacher. She's also giving her friend Cerise a ride to school. Cerise lives 15 minutes from Allison, and it takes her 15 minutes to get to school from there. At what time does Allison need to leave her out house? So... So you want to do 8.30, so minus 10. She wants to get there at 8.20. Oh. Uh, Cerise sleeps 15 minutes from Allison, so uh, that's 8.05. And so you want to subtract another, so this is minus 15. And then minus 15 more. It would be uh, 750. All right. 
And then uh, number four, a warehouse is full of shipping crates. A truck arrives to pick up 20 of them to Boston. An hour later, an hour later, half the remaining crates are moved onto the loading dock outside. If there are 40 crates left in the warehouse, how many were there originally? So you want to take 40 and then do the reverse of this. So, uh, so instead of dividing by two, you multiply by two there is 80. Uh, and then 80 plus 20 is 100. 